In today's report to the people of Montana, Senator Mike Mansfield, our senior senator, and also the majority leader of the United States Senate, presents a rather unique program. To tell you about it, here is Senator Mansfield. My fellow Montanans, and this is Mike Mansfield speaking. In a previous broadcast, I tried to bring home to you some of the things which have happened in Montana over the past several years. One thing I did not emphasize enough, and that is my interest in the people of Montana. I like, of course, to brag about projects like the Yellowtail, Libby, the Hungry Horse, and other things which affect our state. But the thing which gives me the greatest satisfaction are the letters I receive from the people whom I have the honor and the privilege to represent. I receive very few crank letters from Montana. When people write to me, and they write to me on an average of 100 letters a day, seven days a week, it is almost always as a court of last resort. They've tried other ways to uh, settle their own problems. And uh, when they fail, or when they become hopeless, then they turn to their senator. Today, we have with us one of the most distinguished group of panelists it has been my privilege to ever sit with. On my left is May Craig, chief of the Gannett newspapers in Washington. Next to her is Joseph McCaffrey, one of the outstanding commentators on the American broadcasting system. And next to him is Marshall McNeil of the Scripps Howard newspaper chain. I have asked these distinguished reporters to participate with me in this program for the purpose of asking me any questions they want about Montana, about Mike Mansfield, about the nation, about international affairs. Who wants to be first? Me? Senator Mansfield, I have watched Congress from the press galleries for many years. I know you represent the people of Montana. I know you're a Democrat. I know you're the Democratic leader. What I want to know is this. You're paid by the federal government, and you deal in national legislation. How do you decide between these loyalties? Well, May, uh, I am not only a senator from and for the state of Montana, but I am also a senator of the United States. And as such, I rank equally with the other 99 senators from the other 49 states. When there comes a conflict, and there has not as yet come such a conflict, I, of course, would have to make a decision in my own mind which I think would be best. That decision would have to be mine entirely, and the results of that decision would have to be judged by the people of Montana. I know you have sometimes a conscience conflict. Well, everyone has. But you can't avoid a vote. You should not dodge a vote. Sometimes the line of demarcation between a yay and a nay vote is so thin that you're not sure in your own mind as to how you should vote. But I have never failed, when present, to vote on any question before the Senate. And sometimes I've been wrong, but at least uh, I have voted, and I have voted in what I thought would be in the best interest of my state and nation. Senator Mansfield, you may have answered uh, part of the question I'm going to ask uh, in the last minute, but how would you sum up your political philosophy? I'm a Democrat, period. Senator, I wonder if the people in your state understand that you've got the name of Montana in more newspapers more often since you've been leader than anybody in history, I guess, which uh, leaves you in a kind of a difficult situation because you have power and use it so gently. How are you going to use that power next session uh, to do something about the excise taxes? Well, in the first place, Marshal, I have to be re-elected before I'll be back here in the next session. And that decision will be made by the voters of Montana on November the 3rd. Now, the president has indicated that if he is re-elected, and uh, if the economy keeps on going as it is at the present time, that he would give the most serious consideration to a further tax reduction. It is my belief that uh, if the economy is in good shape, the president will recommend reduction in excise taxes uh, to the end that these uh, taxes, which were put into effect uh, during the Korean War, 
would, if not done away with, at least be reduced considerably. But if a tax cut meant that uh, it would cause inflation, I, for one, would vote against such a tax cut because I think the stability of the economy must be maintained and the value of the dollar uh, kept uh, where it is. Now, in the session just ended, uh, in the session of the Senate that you led, you cut the president's budget by about uh, four and a quarter billion dollars. That is correct. Um, uh, that's not as high as some, it's not as low as some others. Uh, do you foresee that uh, this sort of record might continue in the next session? Yes, because if you go over the record of the Congress over the past decade and longer, uh, you will find that every year the Congress has reduced the president's uh, budget request substantially. Last year, for example, the reduction was about uh, six uh, billion dollars. This year, as you say, it is slightly over four billion dollars. But you must keep in mind that this year also we reduced taxes by eleven and a half billion dollars, which contributed greatly to uh, business prospects, increased employment, and a generally better economic level. One other, excuse me. Um, each week you go down and see the president uh, because he has to keep in touch with his leaders in Congress. Uh, tell us about your relationship with the man under whom you served as whip when Johnson was the majority leader. The relationship with the president on the part of all the leaders is most excellent. Uh, he never tries to pressure us. He tells us what his views are. We tell him what we think and what the prospects are. Uh, the president recognized that there is a line of demarcation uh, between the legislative and the executive branches, and he observes that line scrupulously, and I observe it as well. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, fair to say that uh, both Presidents Kennedy and Johnson had a good perspective of just where that line lay between the two branches of the government. Senator Mansfield, uh, the Republicans charge that the president is an arm twister. Now, you've been within range, uh, your arm has been within range of the president many times. Have you had yours twisted? Uh, not since he's been president, but while I was whip and he was the majority leader, he did attempt to twist it a few times, but I uh, don't think he got very far. <laughs> Senator Mansfield, I've been campaigning a little bit with Senator Goldwater, the Republican. He says he wouldn't negotiate with communists until they pull the Berlin Wall down. Well, anyone has hindsight, and uh, Barry Goldwater is saying a lot of things now that uh, uh, I don't think should be taken too seriously because the responsibility has not been his in the uh, presidency. I would point out, speaking of Berlin, May, that uh, some years ago I made a suggestion that both East and West Berlin, not just West Berlin alone, but East and West Berlin ought to be unified uh, so that perhaps the uh, prototype of a unified Germany could come into being. Uh, had that proposal been followed at the time it was made, there would be no Berlin Wall today. But now the wall is there. Uh, the thing to do is to make the best of it, to try and break it down gradually, but as far as uh, following the Goldwater ultimatum policy is concerned, I think that uh, there's nothing to be gained by it. Uh, perhaps it's good propaganda for the Republicans, uh, but it's uh, poor policy as far as this country is concerned. Well, Senator uh, Goldwater also says that there might be a very sudden military emergency overseas. The president might be disabled. He thinks that there should be limited use and control of the nuclear bomb given to other commanders in the field. How do you stand on that? I disagree with him completely, and I agree with what President Eisenhower has said. There is only one man who, uh, who should have the authority and the power to press that button if and when, God forbid, it is ever needed. And that man should be the President of the United States, no matter who he happens to be. There is no such thing as a conventional nuclear weapon. There are such things as radioactive fallout from even the smallest of weapons, and I think uh, most sincerely and most emphatically that only one man can control uh, uh, nuclear weapons, and that is the President of the United States. Senator, but Senator he has once had a heart attack. He might have another and be unable to decide. Well, if I had a heart attack and could operate on a 21-hour-a-day basis like Lyndon Johnson, I don't think I'd have any worries about my health. Senator Mansfield, about 12 or 14 weeks after we hold our election on November 3rd, Khrushchev is going to visit uh, West Germany, the first Russian leader to set foot on free German soil since World War II. 
Uh, do you think that there's going to be, and that is the beginning of a rapprochement between uh, Germany and Russia, and if so, uh, would it call for some changes in our thinking? Uh, no one uh, could answer that question, Joe. I would hope that uh, the assumption stated would be the correct one, because I think that a unified Germany is necessary if you're going to have a peaceful Europe. As long as Germany is divided, then I think the seeds of war uh, are inherent in, 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 uh, in such a position. Uh, relative to our uh, position vis-a-vis -vis Germany, we, of course, have always advocated a unification of that country, and I would hope that uh, this could be brought about. May I say, speaking of Germany, that I think that, uh, uh, what, uh, that uh, the, uh, the gradual uh, diminution of our forces in that country is uh, not a bad uh, thing, because after all, uh, the Germans are now in a position where they can take on more in their own defense, and I think we ought to do less with the passage of time. Senator, you're one of the few men in the Congress who can qualify as an expert on Southeast Asia. Will you give us your rundown on the Vietnam uh, troubles as of now, and what you think the outcome might be, sir? Well, the situation is about as critical as it can get. Uh, may I say that I do not believe in advancing into North Vietnam and China, nor do I believe in pulling out. I think that the reason we're in Vietnam is to achieve stability and uh, coherence for that country, and what I think we ought to do is to make certain uh, that the uh, inroads over the Ho Chi Minh Trail are cut off and the uh, inroads made by uh, the sea passage uh, past the 17th parallel uh, should be uh, further guarded against. Uh, this is a Vietnamese war in which we are participating, and the final answer to that struggle will have to come from the Vietnamese themselves, and it's up to them uh, to bring about the cohesion necessary uh, to uh, give that country the stability it needs, the breathing uh, uh, time it must have, and the hope which its uh, people have sought uh, since 1939. Senator, you, what do you, uh, uh, you gauge the uh, sentiment of uh, Montana to be on the Vietnamese war? Like the other 49 states, uh, they're very interested in what goes on. Uh, they uh, know that the situation is not too good, and uh, this is being discussed during the campaign, and I think it should be. I would only hope uh, that uh, all these matters in the field of foreign policy, Vietnam and others, uh, would be discussed on a constructive basis, and uh, people who find fault with what this administration is doing there uh, would come up with the constructive alternatives of their own. After all, this is an area in which we're all involved, and this is something which we should unitedly uh, seek uh, a solution to. Well, folks, uh, that's about it for this broadcast. Thanks a lot for participating. Thank you for your questions. Uh, we'll be back again uh, shortly to have uh, another broadcast of this nature at which the same d distinguished panel will ask further questions. Thanks a lot and so long.